da sind wir wieder. Wir haben den Jord gefunden. Äh, dann schauen wir jetzt mal die Gitarren vom Jord Heuern an. Ich bin übrigens der Philipp, äh, der Kollege äh, von den beiden Kollegen, die ihr vorhin immer im Bild gesehen habt. Normalerweise stehe ich hinter der Kamera, jetzt darf ich mal nach vorne. Jetzt ist er natürlich gerade wieder im Gespräch. Don't worry. So, uh, that is Jord. Jord, nice to meet you. I'm Philip from Guitar Magazine. And uh, your company is called uh, Juggernaut, is that correct? Uh, not really. It's uh, Red Layer Guitars. That's the brand name. <laughs> I got it all wrong. I'm so sorry. No, the, model, the model is named. The model is named Juggernaut. Um, yeah, I just got one model right now. It's a Juggernaut and it comes in different uh, different uh, specifications and uh, different themes, I guess you can call them. Um, so these are all some of my creations that I uh, uh, worked on uh, past year. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, Looks like metal guitars, uh, or rather like for a heavier sound, made for a heavier sound. Could you tell me something about the Fragments guitar? Uh, would you show it into the camera real quick? That'd be great. Like, get it, uh, that'd be great. Well, these guitars were uh, made, the first one was actually made uh, to play uh, Meshuga, which is a very heavy metal band. They play eight strings, so I wanted to make uh, kind of the same guitar that they play as a spec, so there's the Lundgren M8 pickup, and the scale length was the same as the uh, original g guitars that they used. It's uh, almost, uh, it's at 29.4 inches. Uh, so it's a baritone uh, guitar, so it's a really heavy sound. Uh, basically they all are, uh, they all are 29.4, like this multi-scale right here. It's uh, 29.4 and the smallest scale is 27.5. Um, yeah, th those are standard for my uh, guitars, basically. So they're really big, and uh, they the sound they uh, cut through everything. That's why I call it the Juggernaut, and uh, it's just a big piece of guitar. But it's I think it's well balanced enough so that it almost plays like a six string, and um, there are different varieties in the in the styles so this is more like a traditional kind of guitar a bit more simple down as uh, aesthetics this one is visually very very uh, very hefty i guess and uh, i also got a led guitar which is also very visually present um, uh, give me, I, I, I've got a question about the body. I mean, the guitar is called Fragments, Juggernaut Fragments. Yeah. Uh, what is the body made of? Um, well, the back of the body is a walnut. So it's a walnut body. It has a bubinga layer between the body and the top. And the top is a big leaf, orig uh, big leaf maple or Oregon maple. It's kind of like a goldish orangey kind of looking maple. And the same woods are used in the fretboard as well. So it goes from uh, walnut through bubinga, which is kind of hard to see. I guess I should have used a uh, wood that's more, has more contrast, but, and it turns into the... But what material is uh, the, the sorry, um, top made of? Yeah, um, there are uh, wooden cubes that are the same as the top wood, and then it's filled up layer by layer with uh, with an epoxy resin so i started way down in the middle with uh, cubes that are two by two by two millimeters and then the next day i had to set my alarm to um, uh, there's a stage where the epoxy is uh, liquid enough so you can move the cubes but they don't go back to uh, one surface so i had to wake up in the middle of the night to turn them all so that they would be like this like randomized and then the next day I could uh, do the second layer of three by three by three, four, and eventually I got this, and I was like, yeah, I, this is the result. Took me a week to make the, this. That's some that's some dedication. I gotta say, man. Same same with this one. That's uh, that's just like for how long have you been building guitars? 
Um, well, Red Lair is about four years old, I guess, but I've been doing, this was the first with the fretboard. That was the first uh, one that I made that had a bit more uh, uh, detailed inlay, inlay work in them. And I, I think that was in 2016. So I guess this one is the oldest of the bunch. It's uh, about two years old. And then I made that one and then it started to become fun. So I made a lot more and basically they're all just kind of prototypical experiments. Uh, yeah, so. All right, thanks a lot. So one last question. Uh, what would I have to pay for this and that guitar? I mean, wh what are they worth? Uh, for me, a lot. <laughs> I put it now, but it, it's uh, it's uh, really hard to put a price on this because they're not built for uh, to be sold. They're built to be built. So this is actually just uh, I guess it's more like a tribute. As a builder, this, these are really li uh, nice instruments. But as a player, I would always go for the more trusty one. If you would go on a tour with your favorite band for a year, do you want to end up with a with a really heavy? Epoxy filled uh, guitar one. And have dance in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you want uh, a workhorse. You want a really decent guitar. And I'm going to focus much more on that in the coming years. So uh, I'm going to try to build up uh, uh, some guitars that are just standard. They're already really, uh, the playability is better and stuff like that. So more focus on the player, on the playing than the, than the artwork will be there too, but not, not as hef heavy as this, I guess. Uh, one last favor I gotta ask you for, could you uh, show the guitar to the camera real quick? Yeah. I, you know. I hope the USB is so long enough. Uh, okay, we might have to close in here. That's amazing. That's crazy, also the light changes, wow. Yeah, it's all programmable through the USB that's hooked up to my laptop, so uh, that's pretty cool, yeah.